Galatians chapter 5. Are you there? Say amen. I'm not going to ask you this morning if you have any idols in your house. What I'm going to ask you this morning is, do you have them in your heart? That's a more dangerous place. You know, I just now thought of a passage of scripture, and I'm going to turn there and get it ready. Galatians chapter 5, and then, uh, let's see here, Ezekiel 14. You might want to turn there and hang on to that. I don't have it up on the screen, but we're going to turn there anyway in a little bit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. A lot of truth in that. Amen? Remember, the Spirit and the Bible go hand in hand. You want to walk in the Spirit? You want to know how to walk in the Spirit? Open your Bible up and read it. And walk therein. Walk the way that God tells you to walk in the Bible. Walk the way that God instructs you in, in the Word of God. So this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. And just think about that in your life. Here's your Bible. And the flesh will lust against your Bible. And you won't be reading your Bible. You'll be out lusting after other things. Or, the Spirit will work against your flesh, and you'll be in your Bible. And you'll be rejoicing. You'll be praising God. And all of a sudden, you ain't got the, you ain't got the time, and you ain't got the heart to go sin. I mean, that's just how it works. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. And I want you to get a hold of that. Because what is in your heart will always come out. If you've got, the first one he says is adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. And we preached on that a couple weeks ago. If adultery is in your heart, it will manifest. Amen? By the way, did you enjoy Pastor Rock last week? Amen? Did you enjoy him? I did too. I'm not him. So you're stuck with me this morning, alright? So... If it's in your heart, it will manifest. So he says, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Next is idolatry. And again, I'm not going to ask you, do you have any idols at your house? Do you have any statues that you pray to? Because I don't think you do. But there's something worse than having an idol... In a church, by the way, Pam, that, that Lutheran church, did they have a, a statue in there? Did it? They did not. Okay, that's good on their part. Because I've been to Lutheran, I've been to a Lutheran church once and they had a big statue of Jesus in there. And it was at a funeral. And I thought, man, you know, I, I, I had a problem with it. It was up on the stage. Big statue of Jesus sitting up on the stage. And I thought, well, okay, you know. Then the Lutheran minister came in the back and he's walking down the aisle and he's reading a prayer out of a book. And I thought, well, okay, you know, that's just the way they do things. And then he walked up on the stage and he's facing the statue and he's reading the prayer to the statue. And I went, that's not right. That is specifically what God said don't do. Amen? And that was not a Catholic church, it was a Lutheran church. And it was a Lutheran church in this county. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. I've got 18 sermons right here. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So I'm going to ask you this morning, do you have any idols? Do you have any idols? Let's go to the Lord and ask for God's help. Father, help me preach this message. Father, I'm preaching to Baptists. 
And Baptists are not known to have statues that we pray to. But Father, you reminded me that there are other idols that people have. There are things in this Bible, Lord, that you said is like idolatry. And Father, there's no doubt in my mind that we can be guilty of a form of idolatry. And Father, if we are, then correct us. Chastise us if necessary. Chasten us. Convict us. Transform us. Help us, dear God, to do right. Father, you're a loving God, you're a merciful God, but you are a jealous God. And you will not have any other gods before you. So, Father, help us, dear God, to search our hearts this morning to see if there's any idols there. Help us, dear God, to search our heart to see if there's any covetousness there. Help us to search our heart to see if there's any stubbornness there. Because those are the things that you said are like idolatry. And so, Father, I pray, God, that you bless the message. Father, convict someone, change someone, help someone this morning. I pray, God, that you would use this message for your glory and your kingdom's sake. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said... Amen. Now look at Exodus 20. Turn there in your Bible, if you would, Exodus 20. I like what Pastor Rock said. He said, when you hear those Bible pages turning, it gives the devil a headache. So let's give him a migraine this morning. Amen. Exodus chapter 20. That's the Ten Commandments, 70th chapter of the Bible. By the way, a new watchman's coming out today. It's on uh, the number, it's on the number 10. And it's a good, good, good study. So we'll be out with it this afternoon, all right? Exodus 20, verse 1, And God spake all these words, saying, There's seven words in that verse, by the way. And He said, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Raise your hand if God's pulled you out of Egypt and out of bondage. Raise your hand. Somebody say amen. So watch this now. He said, I'm the God that did that. Now verse 3, Thou should have no other gods before me. It was not any other God that did that for you, but it was God that pulled you out of Egypt. It was God that saved you out of the house of bondage. Amen. He said, thou shalt not, then he said, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. He said, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. If God, if Jesus is our espoused husband and he is to the church, then Paul, that's what Paul was saying in 2 Corinthians 11. He said, I'm, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. God himself is jealous. He said, for I espouse you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been betrothed to Jesus and Jesus is God and God is a jealous God. He will not have you serving a different God. And you say, well, bless God, I don't have any idols in my house. I don't have any, we don't have any idols in church. There are no images here that we bow to, nothing that we pray to. Bless God, I guess I'm safe from that. We'll just hang on a little bit. He said, I, the Lord God, have been jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 4, turn there. Let's hear your Bible turning. Give the devil a headache this morning. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land whither you go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For you saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Now let me, ex let me explain what he said. In Exodus 19, God called Moses and the Israelites to Mount Sinai. 
And he said, Moses, I'm going to bring you up to the mountain. But God from Mount Sinai, God's presence was on top of Mount Sinai. And the Bible said that there was thunderings and lightnings and there was the, the top of the mountain was on fire. And they heard the sound of a trumpet exceeding long, exceeding loud. And then they heard God speak to them his Ten Commandments. And by the time they were, it was done, the people, by hearing God's voice, were so shaken by it, they said, Moses, from now on, you go up and you hear God for us and come and tell us what God said. But we cannot bear the voice of God. It makes us, it, it's, it's scaring us. It's going to kill us. We're not going to laugh. And so God said, you saw the fire, you saw the smoke, you heard the sound of the trumpet, and you heard my voice, but you did not see me. So, do not think that you can carve an image of me because you did not see me. So if anybody carves out an image and says, this is God, it's not God. Because we have not seen God. We have not seen Jesus. Amen. We don't know what he looks like. To me, God looks like this. The word was God. This is the only image allowed for us to know what God is and who God is. Amen. Now we know that God has eyes. We know that God has, a, has nostrils. We know that He has a mouth. We know that He has arms. We know that He has legs and feet. We know that He has a body. We know those things, but we do not know what God looks like. And so we cannot, we cannot think that any image or any idol is God because it's not. We don't know what God looks like. Amen? So that's what He's saying. He said, you saw no similitude. Out of, out of there. And so he said in verse 16, lest you corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. The Philistines worship Dagon. Dagon was half fish and half man. That's the God that they worshipped. And God said, that's just an idol. That's not me. And he said in verse 19, Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole of heaven. Do not practice astrology. Do not think that because you're a Gemini or you're a Taurus or you're a Sagittarius or you're a Leo or a Virgo that that determines who you are and what you are and what fate you have. The stars have no choice in your life. God does. God is the one that directs your path. Not the stars, not the sun, not the moon. God is the one that does that. And he said, don't serve them. Don't follow them. Now, there are religions around the world. Psalm 96, 5, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. There's an idol there of Buddha. The statue of Mary. Mary, listen, let me tell you something. Mary is not your God. Mary is not your Savior. Mary is not your mediator. There's one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. That is an abomination. This is why I will not join the ministerial league of Festus. I will not partner with men who bow to idols. I won't do it. Then there's Sheba, where Pastor uh, Lordson Rock comes from. They worship the idols of Sheba. They have Ganesha, which is the elephant god. They have a monkey god. that They, they worship a monkey. But that's what they do. 333 some odd million gods that they have in India that they worship. That's nuts. That's crazy. That, and they let the cattle... Run through, I asked, I said, in Goa, do they let the cattle just walk up and down the sidewalk, walk through the streets? And he said, yeah. He said, that's because they believe that that's a God. And so they worship. That's why you cannot touch that cow. You cannot eat that cow because that's a God that they pray to. And I'm going, oh, I'm going to eat a cow. 
Now, we don't worship this stuff, right? Amen? Here's some of our idols. Movie stars. Music stars. Sports. Stars. Politicians. Build statues of George Washington. He's not a god. In the Capitol Dome building, United States Capitol building, if you look up, there is the image of George Washington sitting on a throne surrounded by 13 goddesses. And the painting that's up there is called the Apotheosis of Washington. What they have done is that they have deified George Washington. He has ascended and has become a god over America. That is not our god. So it, it's no wonder to me that the stuff that goes on in the Capitol goes on the way it does. They've got the wrong God. Martin Luther King, they got a statue to him. He's not your God. He is not to be in the place of God. Nobody is. I don't care if it's Martin Luther King or Martin Luther. I don't care if it's John Calvin. I don't care if it's... Ignatius de Loyola, I don't care who it is. If he's a man, he's not God and he didn't become God. We don't pray to statues. We don't pray to idols. We don't pray to those things. Now turn to uh, Ezekiel 14. Rock and roll stars. I, I this was going around knocking doors one time and back years ago and we ended we was trying to meet somebody at their address we went to the wrong address we knocked on the door and this guy living in an apartment over here in crystal city when he opened the door he had paintings of elvis he had statues of elvis he had a videotape on his tv playing an elvis concert on his tv and he had long sideburns and his hair combed over like elvis i kid you not of course he was single And we talked to him a little bit and left and me and old Warren Bergman said, I think we know who his God is. Rock and roll stars are not to be modeled after. Music stars, TV stars, Hollywood stars, sports stars. Just because they can hit a ball, throw a ball, catch a ball, that does not make them somebody significant. Psalm 115, verse 2, Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever He pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them, so is everyone that trusteth in them. They're dumb idols, meaning they can't they have a mouth, they can't speak. They have legs, but then they have to be carried around by men. They have to be crafted by men. They have to be carved out by men. These are not gods. They're not to be worshipped. But there are more dangerous gods than that. In Ezekiel 14. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols. Where? In their heart. You see, if I was to go over to your house and, okay, we're going to do an inspection. Make sure you're clean. We're, we're, church patrol is going to go through your house. We're looking for any statues that you might be bound down praying to. We'd walk through your house and say, okay, that's good. They have no statues. You're good. That in itself may not prove that you don't have a different God. The idol that sits in the church is nowhere near as dangerous as the idol that you have hidden in your heart. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. 
Son of man, these have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Watch this now. Your sin will carve out your God for you. Let me ask you a question. Is it wrong to be a sodomite? So, if a man or a woman is behind the pulpit and they are an open practicing sodomite, do they worship the same God that you and I worship? What they have done is their sin, their sin, the stumbling block of their iniquity, has carved out in their heart a God that accepts their sin. Right? Is that, isn't that how it is? Because they do not worship if they say, well, God loves me the way I am and God made me this way. So therefore, it's okay for me to be his minister. Is that the same God that you and I read about in the Bible? No. So what they have done, they have closed their Bible, and then they have carved out a God in their imagination and in their heart that is not the God of this Bible. And you, if you're not careful... Your sin, your, your favorite sin. The one you run to all the time. The one you do all the time. The one you're guilty of all the time. If you're not careful, your sin will overtake your theology. And you'll say, here's the devil now feeding it to you. And you'll say, well... Since I'm like this, maybe God made me this way. And so therefore, it's okay that I be this way. I still believe in God. But now, the God that you believed in has been carved out by your imagination. By your sin. And there is an idol in your heart. There is a God that you have carved out in your mind and in your heart that does not match the God of this Bible. And your sin did that. It's like the guy that came to me. He married a wife. They had three or four children. They were going to a church. But he started lusting after another woman in that church. She started lusting after him. And pretty soon they were committing adultery. So he comes to me, want me to justify it for him, and, because he was saying, I really feel like God wanted me and this woman together instead of me and my wife together. So what he did was, his iniquity carved out a God that wants him to commit adultery with this woman and leave his wife and children. That's not the same God that's in this Bible. That God that said, thou shalt not commit adultery. It's not the same God. <laughs> They've put the stumbling block of in their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, every man of this, of the house of Israel, that setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. You know what God's saying? Because there's an idol in your heart of a God that you carved out that allows your sin, I will now be answering you according to the gods that's in your heart. In other words, you're going to start believing lies. And I won't give you the truth. I won't let you hear the truth. I won't let you believe the truth. And you're going to believe lies from now on. Because there is a different God in your heart than me. 
And he said, that at verse 5, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. This is you carving out your own God. Romans chapter 1, turn there. Romans chapter 1, come on, let's give the devil a headache here. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. See, if you'll read your Bible, you'll look out in nature and you won't see a different God. You'll see the God of the Bible. God will show it to you. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their what? Images, images, idols are called images in the Bible. Images come from, since nobody saw God, we can't carve out God from fact. We can only carve out God from our imagination. Images come from the imagination. The imagination is this part of your brain that draws pictures, that comes up with what you hear a voice on the radio and you try to imagine what that person looks like. Some of you, you listen to Reg Kelly, never saw him before, and when you saw him, you're going, well, that's not who I had in my mind. That's not, or some of you said, yeah, that's him. That's kind of how I had him figured. Some were right, some were wrong. But they had an image, and they didn't, but they had, had, didn't have anything to go by. And what people do is, because there's sin in their heart, their sin then carves out the image of a God from their own imagination that allows them to continue in their sin. And that's the God, the idol that they have in their heart, and it's not the real God. And their foolish heart was darkened. There it is right there. God will let you believe lies. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, the birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. You see, some of you have friends that you know you can go to and say to them, you know, I do this and my church, they don't know I do this, but I do this and I don't see anything wrong with it, do you? And you've got a friend that'll say, well, I know there ain't nothing wrong with that. Your church is crazy. You can keep doing that. I do that all the time and I, I believe in God. See, you can find people that will justify your sin for you, right? So what you do then, based upon them, you carve out an image of God that looks like your friends and acts like your friends. An image of God that will allow you to continue in your sin. Had a guy in the church out at Richwoods years ago. He brought, I knew that he was struggling and I knew what he was struggling with. And it just came out of his heart one Sunday. I was teaching on, I don't remember what I was teaching on, but I said something about alcohol, strong drink and wine. And he said, he just had to say it. Well, I believe it doesn't matter what you do as long as you do it in moderation. And I knew what he was saying. Because I knew that he had been going around to his friends, asking them if it was okay to drink. And they said it was. And so what he did was carved out an image of God and put that in his heart where his God would allow him to drink alcohol and beer every night and he finally said well I don't believe God has a problem with me having a beer every night but we all know that just having a beer at night is not the end of where the devil's taken you we know that that's only the beginning of it so you can justify whatever you want to justify and you can find enough friends that'll tell you that what you're doing is right. And then pretty soon, you've got your chisel out. And you're chiseling out in your heart a God that's modeled after your friends. Corruptible man. 
And that God then allows you to drink in moderation. Because that's what, uh, that's what the Bible says, right? The Bible says drink in moderation. Doesn't it say that? No. But that's the verse that they see. God is the Bible. And they didn't like what the Bible actually said. So they carved on it a little bit. So the Bible said drink in moderation. Let's take out a few verses out of the Bible. Now God doesn't look like that verse anymore. Because we took it out. I was a sodomite. So we have Bibles now that don't have the word sodomite in it. Now God doesn't look like he's against sodomites. And we carved that out. You get where I'm going? Where do images come from? Job 21, 27. Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me. God knows your thoughts, doesn't he? And he knows the idol... The image of God that you carved out in your heart and God knows that it doesn't match who He is. I wonder, since I'm not preaching to a house full of Roman Catholics and I'm not preaching to a church full of Buddhists, I'm not preaching to a church full of Mormons and Muslims and everything like that, I'm preaching to you guys. I wonder how many things we do that aren't right, but we justify them. See, I don't know you other than outside of here. I don't know you outside of here. I don't follow you around all week spying on you, looking at what you're doing. I don't know... What, I don't know what magazines you have in your house, and I don't know what you read all week, and I don't know what your, your internet feed is, and I don't know what cable channels you have, and I don't know where you go certain nights. So I don't know you, but God does. But I can, I can just imagine that in just about any church, there are people who do things that they know are not right. But they don't like that guilty conscience. So, they start carving out God who then justifies what they do. And they say... I don't think God has a problem with me doing what I'm doing. Am I right on that? Do I know human nature? Yeah, because I got one. I got a human nature. And I got a human nature that wants to carve out a God that allows me to sin. But I, in reality, I have a God who does not allow me to sin. So, God knows what you wrongfully imagine against Him. God knows it. Psalm 2, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? You see, when you carve out a God that's not the God of the Bible, it's a vain God. It's a God that puts up with your vanity, your pride. Jeremiah 7, 24, But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Where's heaven? It's forward. Where's hell? It's back where you came from. So what you do is you do things that are wrong. The Bible says they're wrong. You know they're wrong. But you don't like feeling guilty. 
So you carve out stuff out of your Bible and chisel that away and say, well, that's not for me. And I don't care if you take off half of God's mustache. It's not God anymore. If God has a mustache. I don't care if you chisel his cheeks in just a little bit different. Then that's not God anymore. And whatever verse gets you, but you don't like it getting you. So you chisel at it somehow, some way, so that that verse doesn't get you anymore. And now your God is different than the God of the Bible. When you just, when you do things that are wrong, and justify them. Then you have a different God. Than the God of this Bible. So now. The Baptists. Are more guilty. Than the Roman Catholics are. Right? Because our idols. Are not in our church. And they're not in our house. The false image of God is in our heart. And it's the stumbling block of our iniquity. And God says to you, if you carve out a different me, then don't expect me to convict you, to say no to you, to tell you the truth. Don't expect me to keep you in my mercy or in my truth because your God is before me. And before you come and consult me, you consult the God in your heart first. And that God is going to lie to you every single time. I don't want... A God that will lie to me. I want a God that tells me the truth. Even if I don't like the truth. I want the God that tells me the truth. And I want my God to look like everything that's in this book. Whether I'm guilty of it or not, that's what I want my God to be. When I read this book, my mind then has the correct idea and image of who God is. And a God, any God that you make up, that lets you sin and get away with it is an idol in your heart. And those idols need to be cast down. When Israel went into the promised land and God said, you see those idols there? What did God tell them to do with them? What did God tell them to do with them? Destroy them. He said, I don't want you looking at them. I don't want you thinking about them. I don't want you learning how they worshiped them. I don't want you doing any of that. But you know what Israel did? They did exactly what God told them not to do. And Israel's paying the price for it to this day. The Jews are paying the price for it to this day. They don't have the correct image of God. They have no idea who God really is. No idea. Baptists can turn into that. Can't they? Jeremiah 9, 14, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after Balaam, which their fathers taught them. Well, my daddy believed this way and my daddy said it was okay, so I'm going to do it because my daddy said it was all right. Your daddy was wrong. Carve out a God that looks like your daddy. You're not right with God. Jeremiah 16, 12, And you have done worse than your fathers, for behold, you walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart, that you may not hearken unto me. 
Jeremiah 18, 12, and they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will every one do the imagination of his evil heart. Nahum 1, 11, there is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. That's the Antichrist, by the way. Christ is the wonderful counselor. The Antichrist is the wicked counselor. He's the one, the spirit of Antichrist is the one telling you that it's okay for you to sin, that it's okay for you to do wrong, it's okay for you to not read your Bible, it's okay for you to not pray, it's okay for you to live in adultery, it's okay for you to skip church, it's okay for you to do these things, it's alright, and that's the God that you've carved out in your mind because somebody else told you it was okay. Romans 1. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So, ask the question. Have you justified your deeds? Knowing that God said it was wrong, or knowing that God said that was right, you didn't do what was right, or you did what was wrong. And you know God, the Bible, said that it was wrong. But then you decided, you come up with some way where you could justify it. You're not serving the same God. And it's time, the Baptist tore the idols down. Time.